Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. Today's Do You Know question is, do you know the key messages of the Gospels of the first and second Sunday of Lent? The Lenten lectionary readings are usually grouped into two separate groups, first and second Sunday, and then third, fourth, and fifth Sunday. The third, fourth, and fifth Sunday are usually known as Scrutiny Sundays. Uh, the first and second Sunday of Lent always proclaim similar passages from the Synoptic Gospels, namely Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, the first Sunday always proclaims the temptations of Jesus in the desert, and the second Sunday always proclaims the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountaintop. Now, why are these particular passages, uh, these particular narratives, uh, you know, put at the beginning of Lent, uh, and what, what significance do they have for Christian living? Um, Lent is a season focused on conversion and metanoia. This is a lifelong process, but we focus on, on Lent in, in an intense sort of a way. And uh, as a result of this, uh, you know, we recommit ourselves, as seen in our metanoia, we recommit ourselves to our baptismal call and promises. Now, metanoia is a Greek word, essentially meaning uh, a change of mind and heart uh, uh, to do away with all those things that we desire for ourselves and to move towards those things that God desires of us. Uh. So it's a process, therefore, that be really begins by confronting all those things that tempt us uh, you know, away from God and helps us move in the direction towards God, towards what God desires. Um, now, Jesus, as fully human like us, is tempted in the same way that we are. Uh, he has to face the same temptations that we face as human beings. And what are those temptations? Well, there are three temptations in the narratives as we talk, and the three are best summarized with the terms sensuality, power, and money. And these, really, when you think about it, these are actually the source of all sinfulness among human beings. Eh? Uh, so it, God desires uh, us to overcome these and to confront these in order to be true children of God, our true identity as children of God. So sensuality, let's look at that. Uh, this is focused on turning stones into bread. Uh, this is essentially you know, the temptation that we always have, if it feels good, do it, regardless of the consequences. Uh, so Jesus is tempted to sensuality. Jesus is tempted also to power, uh, that, that, you know, that throw yourself down from the parapet of the temple and God will, uh, will take care of you. This is an attempt to, to control God. Many of us have this issue that God somehow or other should respond to us the way we want to. You know, it's uh, having things our own way. That's a control issue. A lot of temptations, a lot of sinfulness issue around the, the whole area of control. And then finally, the money and wealth. Uh, uh, money and wealth, as we all know, uh, whenever we have it, we want more and more, and we move to get it uh, in any way possible oftentimes, especially with no, con no concern for others. And so these are the three temptations that Jesus had to face and the temptations that we all had to face in our daily lives. And with God's help, we know that Jesus turns and uses God's words and God's help to overcome these temptations. Huh? And in so doing, it reveals his true identity as uh, son of God, and ultimately it helps us to reveal our true identity as children, beloved children of God. Mm -hmm. And this is why in it somehow the second Sunday is focused on the transfiguration. What does the transfiguration actually mean? In this particular case, is it's a vision uh, that we, according to the, the Gospels, it's a vision in which Jesus is uh, pictured with Moses and Elijah representing the law and the prophets, uh, God's revelation in, into the Jewish people. Uh, and Jesus seems to be incorporate both the law and the prophets. And in that sense, uh, 
Jesus now becomes a guide for us of what God desires. And in so doing, uh, Jesus is transfigured. Huh? Uh, uh, by the way, because of uh, Jesus incorporating what God desires, we hear the voice from heaven saying, listen to him. Become uh, using Jesus as a model. Huh? And because Jesus continually uh, uh, kind of uh, continually worked at uh, confronting those things that would remove him from his uh, uh, away from God to those things that actually focus on God's desires as because he continually committed himself to that his true identity begins to be revealed as uh, the son of God and so as disciples of the Lord uh, as disciples of the Lord whenever we commit ourselves like Jesus modeling ourselves on Jesus whenever we commit ourselves to truly live like Jesus and to work at committing ourselves to, to do those things that God desires, we too, our true identity begins to be transformed uh, as well. Uh, and, you know, in baptism, huh, we, become, we, we became new creations, uh, you know, children of God and sharers in divine life. Huh? So w for our true identity to really shine forth as it does for Jesus, uh, we have to re continually recommit ourselves to doing those things that God desires of us. And when we do that, our true identity will shine forth as children of God and as sharers in the divine life. And this is the key reason why these two narratives are linked together in the season of Lent. Uh, because in overcoming our temptations, uh, uh, those things that tempt us away from God and, and choosing those things that God desires, we really are transformed and our true identity is revealed and it shines brightly for all to see. So I hope this has helped to explain just a bit of what the key messages are in the two Gospels from the first and second Sunday of Lent. And I hope you'll return again to more of the Uno series questions as we continue to delve into our spirituality and our faith. Thank you very much.